Here's why you shouldn't quit cannabis entirely. The first thing I wanna say is this video is not going to be an excuse to perpetuate weed if you're using it as a vice. Most people use it to numb out, but I have found over the years that it has properties that most people are missing out on completely. And that's what I'm gonna get into. My journey with cannabis has been very interesting. It's something that for the longest time I could barely count on two hands how many times I had smoked it. Usually it was with friends and depending on who I was with, it was either a great experience or I was filled with anxiety and it was very uncomfortable. On the times that it was enjoyable, it was either me being able to watch a movie and just kind of numb out and enjoy the experience, food was really delicious, but there were certain times that I noted if I was with the right people and we went into a deeper conversation, all of these things would come up to the surface. It was almost like for a brief period, my consciousness was elevated and I was able to articulate and put into language things that I hadn't been able to for years. Sometimes I would even spontaneously start crying. And this was a big reason why I was never comfortable doing it around most people, especially as a man who doesn't show emotion or vulnerability. I can recall one nightmarish experience when I had smoked it with some ex-in-laws. And I wouldn't really call this an emotionally safe environment in terms of being your true, authentic, vulnerable self. And the substance I was given was pretty much the most potent wax that you could possibly smoke. I basically went on a verbal rampage just talking about how inauthentic everybody was, how everybody's just afraid to be their true selves. I said a lot of personal things that were very inappropriate, but it was indicative of all the things within me, all the traumas, all the things that I hadn't dealt with just kind of coming to the surface. I was also so high that I woke up the next morning terrified because I was still just as high as I was the previous night. Then I was gaslighted by some of my in-laws at the time telling me that that was impossible. But all that being said, after that experience, I pretty much vowed never to touch it again. I just didn't really enjoy it and I didn't really see a reason to. Fast forward years later, after a divorce and a lot of different dark nights of the soul, I found my way to mushrooms, or rather they found me, and I started to go down that rabbit hole. And from a season of taking mushrooms very intentionally, from a therapeutic and conscious lens with the intention to heal and unlock my inner potential, I can truly say that those experiences changed my life. Rather, the integration of the experiences. There are a lot of people out there who have very intense psychedelic trips and experiences, but nothing in their life changes because there's no intention behind it and they don't take the time afterwards to integrate the lessons that the plant medicine was trying to teach you. So all that being said, after I found what I was looking for with that time of taking mushrooms, I somehow found my way to some edibles. Long story short, I saw an advertisement, very random. It looked like a scam, but it basically was saying, hey, you can get this for free. I never go down rabbit holes of that kind of thing, but for whatever reason, my intuition was pulling me down and I ended up getting this container of full spectrum gummy edibles. I got them in the mail. I didn't really think anything of it. I wasn't even that drawn to it until one night, something in my intuition just told me to take one. I was out filming B-roll. If you look at some of my earlier videos, there's a lot of B-roll and stuff. I was out just like shooting and an hour and a half went by since I took the edible and nothing much really happened. And then all of a sudden, it hit me like a ton of bricks. But since I was alone, my set and setting was pretty peaceful. I had this feeling of just calmness and peace and my intuition at that point told me, hey, stop shooting, go inside and meditate. And this pull was so strong that I couldn't resist it. I went inside, I did the lights, I put on a blindfold and I just began to breathe very deeply. And to my surprise, something happened that I did not expect. I started to hallucinate the same way that I did when I was taking mushrooms. Various images were popping up. I saw my childhood self, tears, all these things were coming to the surface and I could feel the intelligence from this plant begin to heal any residual traumas that I had. And frankly, I couldn't believe what was happening. My whole life, I just viewed cannabis as this stoner substance that people use to numb out and to watch TV and it makes pizza taste better. Here I was in this deep meditative state, hallucinating, contacting with some kind of higher intelligence or spirit. I could feel myself being comforted and being healed by this 
loving presence. So after this experience, I really couldn't believe it because I really thought that the only way to have some kind of transcendental experience like this was from a more intense psychedelic like psilocybin or ayahuasca. I began doing research and I couldn't really find anything on this. Thus, my experimentation stage started. A couple weeks later, I felt the intuition to do it again, but this time I felt like I knew what I was getting into. This next time around, instead of taking one gummy, I took a gummy and a half. I believe each gummy is about five milligrams of THC, full spectrum, so it was about 7.5 milligrams of THC. It takes a while for edibles to kick in, but at this stage in my life, I knew that I didn't really want to smoke anything anymore. I had pretty much stopped drinking and I was very conscious of how I treat my body. So I took these gummies and I just started taking a walk and all of these insights started coming in. I could audibly hear the same higher intuition that I had experienced in the past with mushrooms. And of course on the walk, it eventually got so intense. I turned around, came home, and once again, began meditating. And this experience was even more intense than the last one. It's funny how this video is almost like turning out to seem like a trip report. Close my eyes, I began to meditate, and I saw this being. It was almost like a plant creature. It was like covered in mushrooms and plants and branches. But I knew that it was feminine in nature. Once again, all these downloads and insights started coming and I just felt this embrace, like I was being hugged by some sort of benevolent, feminine, divine spirit. And after an hour or so of just basking in whatever this healing presence was, to my surprise, I started channeling very similar to how I was in my biggest mushroom trip. If you've never seen that video, I did an 8.5 gram mushroom trip and this channeling experience started happening in that video that had never happened to me before. It started happening with me with this edible. The only difference was on cannabis, I felt even more coherent than I ever did on mushrooms. So I was able to consciously grab my phone and I just started voice memoing all these downloads and things that were coming to the surface. It was almost like different characters, different voices, and I couldn't believe what was happening. This happened for hours, and I eventually got tired. I ate a little something, went to bed, and then the next day, I took a walk and just started listening to these messages, most of them of which are very personal, so I'm not gonna share them on here. If you're curious about the type of channeling, you could check out the 8.5 gram mushroom trip report that I did, but it was very similar to that. So this started to become like a bi-weekly ritual for me for the last year or so. Usually I'll take a week minimum, oftentimes two weeks to just integrate the experience. I will also say that whenever I do take this substance, especially edibles, the next day I am usually a little bit more more tired coming down from the experience, so I have a little bit less energy. So whenever I decide to do this plant medicine, which is crazy to consider cannabis uh, plant medicine on the level of like ayahuasca and mushrooms, but that really has been my experience. But I notice usually the next day I'm just a, of a lower energy. It's almost like I'm coming down from that whole experience. So if you decide to start trying this, just note that there's a chance the next day you'll be a little bit lower energy. So maybe don't do it on a day when you have a lot of productive shit that you need to do. Now, if you're someone who's been consuming cannabis for a long time and it's just part of your daily life or weekly life and you've never had some kind of profound experience like this, I believe the ticket for you would be to quit altogether. Take a step away. It might be for six months. It might be a year. Essentially, you need to rebuild your relationship with this plan because there is an intelligence in substances like this. And whenever you've built a kind of vice relationship with it, I don't believe that it's going to give you the profound conscious spiritual experiences that are possible. I've since found one person on the internet who talks about cannabis from this angle. After about a year of doing this practice, I stumbled upon a guy, his name is Ryan Sprague. And synchronistically, he randomly popped up on, I think it was an Aubrey Marcus podcast. And he was the first person that I had ever heard speak about these profound experiences on cannabis. And the advice that he gave was for anyone who has a reliant relationship on the plant to essentially quit and then come back to it at a later point in your life from a place of reverence, the same way that you would approach mushrooms or ayahuasca. It's insane to me the power that's in this plant, but since it's a mainstream substance that's now legalized in most places, people completely underestimate what it's possible to do for you. If you're becoming more of a conscious person and you're on a spiritual path, a lot of people feel drawn to things like psychedelics, but it's really tough 
because here, at least in the United States, it's illegal. Things like ayahuasca and mushrooms, you'd have to go off to some retreat in like Costa Rica or something to do it safely and legally. And usually you have to have a good amount of money to participate in that kind of thing. Side note, if that's you, there's a link in the description for a place called Reunion out in Costa Rica. They do guided mushroom and ayahuasca retreats. If you use the code in the description, you'll get $250 off. That's really the only safe and legal way to do those kinds of things. However, for most people, you can easily gain access to some form of cannabis or an edible. If you're a cannabis guru, then you probably even know a lot more about the quality of it, like organic and stuff. The kind that I've been using has just been the brand Five. They have full spectrum gummies. I would recommend starting with one and then doing one and a half. And at this point, on some days, if I want to go really deep, I'll take two, but that's rare because the next day, I'm usually just exhausted from the experience. So this is a new angle, I think, for most of you when it comes to viewing cannabis. If you've never heard of these kinds of experiences, I would encourage you to partake in it in a very, very intentional way. Setting your intention, whether that's healing. A lot of times when I used to smoke it and I would get all this anxiety, I realize now in hindsight that it wasn't that the substance was making me anxious, it was actually bringing to the surface and showing me what was already there. I had all this anxiety, all this fear inside of me at the time, and I had no idea. So I would smoke cannabis and be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so anxious and nervous, I can't smoke it because it makes me feel this way. It doesn't make you feel anything. It just shows you what's already inside of you, and it invites you to look at it and start taking steps towards healing and dealing with those things. If you've made it this far in the video, then you're clearly a seeker of some kind. I would encourage you to go down the rabbit hole of my channel and hopefully it supports you on your journey of becoming a more conscious person. You are loved, you matter, and you've barely scratched the surface of what you're capable of. I'll talk to you soon.